Hello and welcome back to the channel. So the most tight end looking tight end that ever did tight end is currently being drafted at a value right now. Um, he's 23 years old, he's gigantic, and he had a great rookie season. And he's entering the most likely top five breakout year of the position in a year that should see more breakout tight ends. That's probably a player we should talk about. Do you have the time to listen to me grind? Take down the film watchers and learn some at once. So Pat Faramuth, he's in my top 10 dynasty values overall. Now I've gone back through my ranks and applied the, the value formula we were talking about in the last few videos. Um, he's six foot five, 258 pounds. Now there's, uh, there's lots being made about uh, Carl Pitts being the next great tight end. And he should be, he got over a thousand yards last year with a single touchdown. Simple touchdown regression should see him fall into the top five this year. Um, and he's great. but. If anything, if we like to play the name game, he's the next Jimmy Graham, right? It's part of the fact he's a lot smaller than Jimmy Graham. Something like his height, but nowhere near his weight. Um, Pat Fermoth, is, as a rookie tight end, uh, played 683 snaps. He played uh, 395 routes. The average in the top five is around 496, so he's a little under that. But again, he's a rookie tight end. Most rookies don't do the type of things, don't have these type of numbers. Across the board, you might be somewhat disappointed. You might, uh, Kyle Pitt's thousand yard season is a lot more attractive and a lot more rare at the tight end position in year one. That's Evan Ingram type numbers, a player he's actually more similarly sized to. But all of the top five and Kyle Pitts and Evan Ingram, um, they all represent a new breed of tight end, I think, where they're smaller, slimmer, and much more like wide receivers than the tight end position has been in a while. But that doesn't mean the tight end position has stopped being productive in the way it used to be, even up until very recently. Travis Kelsey, by the way, is more in Pat Fermo's size range. So if there is another, the next great tight end, well, it might be Kyle Pitts in terms of positional, acronym pat Ferramuth is the best example we've seen as the next generations or this generation's great big tight end and we're actually due tight end breakouts this year last year we only saw one tight end repeat inside the top five normally we see about two so we should see more tight ends repeat we should also see more tight ends break out inside the top five as well because on average we see about 40 percent of the top five be breakout candidates i.e players finishing inside the top five for the first time. Last year we only saw one and it was Dalton Schultz. Also smaller than Pat Faramuth, I'll point out. Um, and less targets, but much further into his career. So Pat Faramuth is actually entering his second year after the one of the most impressive rookie seasons from a tight end we have seen not named Kyle Pitts or Evan Ingram. He's more traditionally sized like a tight end and has a decent production of receiving um, from college. This isn't out of nowhere. We knew he was a good rookie prospect heading into 2021. Now, the average top five tight end before getting drafted to the NFL has about 80 receptions, uh, 1,113 yards. It has about 13.5 yards per reception, has played about 25 games, um, has about three receptions a game. So we're talking about low level production at the tight end position before they go on to break out. And it is worth noting that tight end prospects succeed in the NFL often only play one year, like Jimmy Graham, or come from nowhere, or even have a delayed breakout like Travis Kelsey, because it's such a small group of productive players that tend to be a it tends to be a group of outliers, and the average tells something of a lie. Overall, uh, Pat Fermoth was an incredibly productive relative to the position tight end prospect who is reasonably sized and taken significantly high in the NFL draft to a team that it turned out was resplendent in receiving talent. Juju Smith-Schuster, whatever you think of him, I think he performed pretty well last year. He also had Chase Claypool coming off a way too heavy touchdown uh, regression season, which bounced back or bounced under, if you will, in 2021. But Deontay Johnson really ran away with the show, continuing to prove to be the larger volume guy over all three. And in that mess, he managed to earn 683 snaps, 395 routes, and 79 targets as a tight end in his rookie season. That's really impressive. And he's currently being drafted as the ninth tight end off the board at 118 overall in Superflex rank. I understand why he would fall there, but it means he's a
devastatingly interesting value. One more thing. At the tight end position, the most common year that tight ends break out inside the top five is their second year. Now, this is not the same as wide receiver, where we say the most common high-level breakouts actually happen in the third year, but we see the majority of breakouts happen in their second year. He's a devastatingly good dynasty value right now. But what does that mean in terms of actual trade? Because the ninth overall tight end is still a top 12 tight end, and we normally say we don't care about anyone except those top three. Yeah, I'm arguing Pat Fairmouth could be one of those top three this time next year. Since December, since he had a great rookie year, he has fallen from the 82nd overall pick to the 108th overall pick. He has fallen through this offseason, having done nothing but impress and be a giant. Travis Kelsey was recently traded for Pat Fairmouth in a dynasty league for Pat Fairmouth in a second. Now, that's a really smart trade by both sides. Travis Kelsey is much more likely to finish in the top five. But in a dynasty league where everyone outside of Travis Kelsey probably doesn't matter anyway, um, giving up a second round pick to potentially have a younger version when normally the only other option on the table for that is either Mark Ingram or Kyle Pitts where you pay th lots. So it's actually an interesting year to give up an aging tight end who is amazing but relatively under amazing considering the flexibility of the tight end one compared to wide receivers and running backs over the last few years while he has been the reigning dominant tight end. Trades he's mostly packaged up and, and the trade calculator essentially puts his value as a straight up second round pick. I would do that in any league right now. I would give up a 2023 pick for Pat Furmuth immediately if that offer is on the table. Some other interesting trades I found on the Dynasty League football trade calculator. Gabe Davis for Pat Furmuth straight up. That was really interesting. And um, I also Pat Fermo's traded for Amari Cooper. I was a little less sure on that one because Amari Cooper is team old guy, you know? Not the type of player I want to give up, but I'm definitely interested in giving up wide receivers in that range. And it's definitely as smart to switch the position to tempt your trade partner. Um, yeah, I think his value is decent. I think his likelihood of outproducing his current ADP, even in redraft leagues, is really high entering in 2022. And I think he could be the tight end we're looking for, but instead we're overpaying for other tight ends because they're smaller and have a proven production history of being not difference making. It's a really good idea to start sending some trade offers to see where they are at before we enter the 2022 season. And maybe Pat Ferramuth tells them himself that they should be higher on him. All right, let me know what you think. Thanks for checking it out and I'll see you again next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for checking out another video. If you could like, subscribe, comment, that'd all be great. But also check out the rest of the channels I follow my Patreon link to see what I'm up to over there. And the link tree link, I guess, is going to take you uh, to easy access to my podcast, the articles I'm writing over there at DLF, as well as uh, most of the other things I'm up to. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much.